Hi, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this uh, edition of the program, I would like to speak briefly on Andrew Bonus's Prime Minister of Jamaica's refusal to certify or to have certified his statutory declarations. Now, this has been a topical issue for some times now in the media. Well, I shouldn't say in the media, particularly in the independent media, because, because our media, the mainstream media, is not doing sufficient to divulge and to unveil, to unmask what is happening with the with the Prime Minister um, you know, uncertified statutory declarations. Now, we are living in a world in which our prime ministers and presidents around the world are telling us that they are clamping down on misinformation and disinformation because their citizens are being exposed to information that is not correct, information that is dangerous for us. And they would like to, you know, as, as far as they're concerned, they would like to divulge and to transmit and to convey to us truthful, accurate, factual information. But when we see a prime minister who has not yet had his statutory de declaration certified, then what does he expect will happen? If what we're seeing are a lot of obfuscations and deflections, right, and skullduggeries, what do you expect, prime minister? Aren't you going to therefore see, you know, uh, um, people talking about or spreading disinformation, misinformation, or trying to, as it, as, as it were, construct, you know, uh, conspiracy theories. They're going to try to find some way of, you know, saying why you don't want to, why are you refusing? Why are you refusing to have your statutory declarations certified? Now, you know, as we talk about being certified, I was of the impression, perhaps it seems that it has not been released. But it seems to me that his statutory declarations has been released, but it has not been certified. Because it's one thing to release some things, another thing to certify. So I am wondering what is holding up the process of being certified, of having the prime minister's statutory, statutory declarations be certified. I am not sure who is holding up the process or what is holding up the process. I would expect that the media, that's the mainstream media in Jamaica, the Gleaner and the Observer and Radio Jamaica, and all of these media houses there, that they would, you know, seek to do some investigation into what is happening, what is preventing the Prime Minister's statutory, statutory declarations from being released, from being certified. Well, perhaps it has been released, but why has it not yet been certified? But let us listen to a brief clipping of a news coming from TVJ that I'd like to share with you so that we can begin our discussion on that. So let me get this here. Oh, let me let me get this here. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Let me share my screen here. What is happening here? I don't know. I want to close this here. All right, all right, so let me close it and I'll get to you right now. Sometimes it's very difficult to pull these things up. So let me share my screen. I think I have to take this out so you can hear it. Anton gave the update in his remarks. In the agency's annual report for 2023-24, tabled in the House of Representatives yesterday, for this report. Mr. Honus's declarations for 2021 have not been certified, which has affected subsequent submissions. The issue has been a major source of political controversy and concern from civil society. Justice Patton noted that much has been written and said in respect of the non-certification of the Prime Minister's income, assets, and liabilities. But he says that the Director of Information and Complaints is required to examine the declarations and where he's satisfied that it has been duly completed, he is to inform the Commission. Justice Patton explains that to satisfy himself of the due completion of a statutory declaration, the Director shall make such enquiries as he considers necessary. The enquiries are aimed at determining accuracy. Justice Patton says, given the restrictions imposed by the Integrity Commission Act, 
regarding statutory declarations generally and related matters, he cannot comment beyond what has been stated. In the meantime, the Integrity Commission Chairman chastised those calling for to speak on matters relating to statutory declarations or investigations. The law restricts the Commission from making any report or public statement in relation to the initiation or conduct of an investigation by the Director of Investigation prior to the tabling of a report in Parliament. Justice Patton says the Commission awaits the amendments it has recommended that would allow it to make public statements. Machine Masters. All right, so that is the information that we have garnered from that source, from, I think, Television Jamaica. Now, that's something very interesting that the justice has not yet um, declared, certified his statutory declaration. Now, I think that the media house should be delving more into the matter to see why the justice, rather than just giving us these superficial you know, explanation. I think we need to get down to the um the the the, 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 the substantive issues. We need to discuss the substantive issues, substantive matters as to why these um the statutory declaration has not yet been certified. That is the function of journalism. And I think that journalism is absent in Jamaica. Right, true journalism is absent in Jamaica. So where you have that, you are going to have a proliferation of conspiracy theories and also projections and speculations and misinformation and disinformation. And on that basis, on that condition, you cannot blame the citizens because if the prime minister were transparent, right, then we would not, people would not need to go about speculating and forming judgments that are not true, right, that are not factual, that are not grounded in factual analysis, right, and a factual reality. This is something that the Prime Minister needs to think about. This has been going on, and not only that, this has been since 2021, Right, that he that the declaration, the sanctuary declaration has not been certified since 2021. That's a long time, Prime Minister. And what are you doing about it? Now, one of the things in Jamaica also that we have to be concerned about, and the same thing is happening in the United States, you know, are the distractions that we are getting in the media. It is just one distraction after another, and we're not really delving, taking a deep dive into the, these distractions. And why are we being bombarded by these distractions? So on the JLP side here, we have Mr. You know, the PNP are suggesting that Andrew Holden should, re should resign because his statutory declarations has not yet been set certified. On the other hand, we're hearing that Mark Golding should resign because he is um, a dual citizen, right? So we're seeing these sort of distractions and, you know, people are not contextualizing. The journalists in Jamaica are not really doing any investigative reports, right, to see really what is happening and to explain what is happening behind the scenes because they should have access to information that we do not have access to. And that's why we employ them to be journalists and to be able to unmask and to unveil the deep happenings, as it were, the deep events in Jamaica, things that the normal eyes are not privy to, right? That is what they should be doing. But we're not seeing that happening in Jamaica. What is happening? So people are speculating and they are getting upset. But we have to really wonder, when we talk about statutory declaration, shouldn't the journalists have already assessed objectively his earnings and his, his assets and his liabilities and all of that? Shouldn't they have gone through that, a financial reporter, and report the irregularities if there are any, and, and to see if the statutory declaration is within the law, right? And that there are no illegal or illicit transactions or activities on that statutory declaration, statutory declaration, shouldn't they be doing that? But we have not heard from them. All we're hearing is that the prime minister, the prime minister's statutory declaration has not yet been certified. To be certified is one thing and to be accurate, right? And to be not illicit. 
to be something that is legal and the and the entire process the entire document is actually um transparent is another thing right but we are constantly talking about being certified. And yes, it's important that the statutory declaration be certified, right? We That's important for him as Prime Minister of Jamaica. But we also have to delve into not only the document being certified, but that what is in the document, there are no sort of illicit activities, right? That, you know, are questionable. That is what we should be talking about right now. And they, we should be seeing a series of publications in our papers, right, in the press about his statutory declarations, right? And if everything is kosher, if everything is legal, then there's nothing to talk about, right? There is absolutely nothing to talk about. And then it should go on to being certified. Because we, we talk about Mark Golding having certified, having had his statutory declaration certified. But the question is, is everything okay? I mean, is everything legal? Are there any questions about his, you know, financial activities, right? These are some of the questions we need to ask. The journalists need to ask, and they're not asking these questions they're not asking these hard questions and the, and the, and the, the 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 question is why right the question is why are they not answering the hard questions or asking i should say the the, the 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 hard questions why are they not asking the hard questions we need to have the documents because since they're public figures they are public figures so these document, the document should also be published in the Gleaner and the Observer. And piece by piece, a financial reporter should do a, a deep dive, a profound analysis of his statutory declarations. What is so complex about what is happening in Jamaica? We make things that are simple, very complicated. And then we begin to shout and nothing comes of it. Nine day wonder and afterwards everything goes away. But this is a political weapon. So we have on the PNP side, the matter of dual citizenship by Mark Golding. That is what is being weaponized against him. As if there are not other substantive matters that could be talked about with regard to Mark Golding's financial activities, other things that he might be involved in that we are not really talking about that might be pertinent to his aspiration to becoming a prime minister? Are there any conflicts or conflicts of interest? These are some of the questions we should be asking and the media should be divulging these things, should be unearthing these things, but we are not seeing that happening in Jamaica. And the question is, why? Why are we distracting our people with, oh, the statutory declaration is not being certified? Why is it not certified? And where is it? Right? The question should be asked, where is the statutory declaration? And this is from 2021. Where is it? Has it been released? Okay, it's with a justice. Why can't the Gleaner and the Observer get a copy of the document? Right and begin to assess it, to examine it, and to communicate openly with the public. Now, what is their purpose? What purpose are our journalists in Jamaica serving when they can't do these basic things? Right, they can't do these basic things, but what they fill us up with are distractions, and these are nonsensical distractions about. Mark Golding's dual citizenship, which is not here or there, right? We know that that is legal. He can be prime minister, you know, as a Commonwealth citizen. 
particular one who was born in Jamaica. We know that he can be prime minister. So let's move on from that because that already has been solved based on his constitutional rights. However, there might be other things that we need to know about him that we do not know. And pertinent, as I've said, issues, pertinent matters that we're not discussing about him. Andrew Holness, there might be other things also based on his business activities that we need to also talk about. We're not talking about these things. Right? We're not talking about these things. We're just speaking about matters that are just not pertinent to the discussion and will not really help us to solve and to know the candidates very well. So right now we see Mr. Prime Minister, he's running around Jamaica and he's trying to help Jamaicans who have been, you know, hurt and whose possessions have been lost by the by Hurricane Barrow. He's trying to do that as much as possible. And we credit him for doing that. We laud him for doing that. And by the way, the houses that I see him giving to people, is he just doing that indiscriminately or is he doing that based on a, you know, a fair-based, e equal sort of analysis of what needs to be done? Because you can't just give houses here and there and there are people who, other people who need houses. You know, I wonder how much thought went into that process or is it just for fluff and for you know PR for public relations to show us that he's been kind and he's doing his job and if there weren't an, 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 an upcoming election if we weren't going to have an election shortly would he have done these things or is he just doing them because he wants to promote his his party and his government, and let the people know that you know he's the better government. He's going. To, his party is the better party to lead Jamaica forward. Right? I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know. But I think now that the media need to shoulder its responsibilities. There is a dereliction, a dereliction of duty here, media. There is a dereliction of duty. You are not doing what you are tasked to do. And it is to unearth. It is to be antagonistic toward the government, not co combative necessarily, but antagonistic. Right? But what we're seeing now, you're actually in bed with the government. Right? You're not challenging the government and trying to inform Jamaicans so that they can be able to make informed decisions. And that's why we can never have good politics in Jamaica, because if we do not have access to, to accurate information, to unbiased information, right? it might not be objective, but it, at least it's unbiased. You're just giving us the facts and allowing us to make our decisions. And as far as I'm concerned, both Mr. Golding's and Mr. Honus's saturated declarations should be made public. Should be made public. Should be not only certified, but they should be made public. And it should be publicly discussed. And let me call out Dion Jackson Miller. Now, she's well respected in Jamaica as being this investigative journalist. Right? But I'm wondering, recently when they had the Vibes Cartel court case. She was there on, on her YouTube channel and she was giving, she was so vivacious and energized about this court case. And she was informing the citizens about it and, you know, and what the proceedings were, right? Because she knew that Jamaicans are, you know, worked up about Vibes Carter. But what about the prime minister and the opposition leaders statutory declarations, have you, Dion Jackson Miller, done a deep dive, a deep discussion about these documents? Why were you so much, you know, why was that thrill? Are you so excited about rendering your opinions on the Vibes Cartel case? 
when Vibes Cartel, you know, and I respect Vibes Cartel and as his as his own, you know, whatever he's doing. But the fact of the matter is that his the, the report on his court case is not important to Jamaicans. It's not important to Jamaicans. That's not a national issue. We made an, a national issue when that should not have been a national. It's a personal issue. And those of us, those of you who are his fans, fine. Those of you who are his fans, you can do it. But these are not substantive matters for nation building, right? The statutory de declarations from both the prime minister and Mr. Golding, the opposition leader, this, these are national matters and matters which are weightier than what was being discussed in the media about Max Carter. Right? These are way to matters, and we are not seeing any sort of analysis from any of the major media outlets in Jamaica. We're not seeing any. We're not hearing anything of great importance, of great substance. Right? We're not hearing anything. All we're seeing is a weaponization of it by the PNP and then the, the Mark Golding who says that his has already been certified and he thinks he has gotten a free pass. Or perhaps he has gotten a free pass. Because our journalists are not really assessing anything. They're not examining anything. They're just giving us a superficial analysis and then expect people to just say, yeah, it has not yet been certified. What does that mean? And how can it be certified if we don't know what is on it? Right? Things in Jamaica, it's just ludicrous to think that the Prime Minister's statutory declarations can be certified without the public even having an understanding of it. So if it's certified tomorrow, yeah, he goes through it, just like Mark Gordon. He's going to be able to score a big victory here. And I think it's a game, because I think that as the election approaches, that it is going to be certified. I think as the election approaches, that Andrew Holness is going to certify, is going to have his statutory declarations certified. It is a game. It is a political circus. And we see the same thing happening in the United States. The same skullduggery, the same political circus, right? Happening right there. And we are following because we love to follow. Whatever the United States does, we are going to do. Right? Jamaicans, you have to wake up. And you've got to really think more deeply. It's not just about having his statutory declarations be certified, but it's about also being knowledgeable, having a knowledge of the entire document, being exposed to it, reading it for yourselves, having it published in the major media outlets, because he is a public figure. He is a public figure, and he is tasked with State funds. He has he has access to state funds to make on to make us money, right? So we should know he's not a private citizen. Andrew Holness is not a private citizen, and that is what he's behaving as. You know, as I begin to reflect, particularly when I look at what is happening in the United States, and I see this clamoring for the monarchy. Because what we're seeing in the United States is this clamoring, this, this open clamoring. And it, it started years ago, but particularly when Trump came into office in 2016. And it's not only about Trump. It's about both sides of the political spectrum. Both sides of the political aisle were seeing a clamoring for the monarchy. People want to have, they just like to have monarchs. And we can see that from the days of the Jews. Right? When Samuel, who was their prophet, and they clamored, the, the Jews clamored for God to have been removed as king, 
as their king. They wanted an earthly king, as other nations had. And right now, we see Americans clamoring for a king, for a monarch. That's what is happening there. And Jamaica, for years, we have been having the monarchy there. Our monarchs are our politicians. And they can do anything they want to do. And they're not held accountable because they are kings and queens. We have to do our taxes every year. And particularly when we have businesses in, in Jamaica or anywhere in the world, we have to declare our taxes, right? Don't we? We have to, or we're going to face what? The, the, we're going to face the brunt of the law. Right? The law is going to run its course. And they're not going to joke about that. If we have to be in prison, they're going to put us into prison. But what we see with our presidents and our prime ministers, particularly in Jamaica, we see where they can get away with anything, any level of crime. It doesn't matter because they are kings and they run the show and they can do anything because the citizens are what? Not knowledgeable and they can't say anything about it. They can't do anything about it. So all we're concerned about right now is to vote for Andrew Holness or for Mark Corday, irrespective of any illicit activities in which they might be involved. And I'm not suggesting here that they might be involved. They might be involved in any illicit activities. I'm suggesting here that they might be. And the only way we will know if they're not is having their statutory declarations be published and be certified. Not only be certified, not only be certified, but that it also be published so that the public can assess and that journalists can write series of articles about his statutory or their, because I'm also referring to the Minister of uh, the Opposition Leader, Mark Golding, and don't tell me now that, oh yes, he, his has been certified, that Mark Golding's statutory declarations have been certified. Yes, it they have been certified or it has been certified, but do we know really what was in that document? That's the question. We don't know what was in that document. Right? Certified by whom? Right? And why isn't it that Mark Golding was a why wasn't he able or why couldn't the journalists be able to have gotten a copy of it if they have not? Maybe they did. But why have they refused? If they have, why have they refused? to inform Jamaicans as regards Mark Golding's financial activities. Why? Jamaica is a dark place, and that is what I need to help us to understand. It's a dark place. And people are not serious about nation building. We're not serious. Because until we hold our leaders accountable, how can we be serious? If we're treating them like kings, right? We're treating them like kings. So they and their children are the ones who are going to benefit along with the financial elites from the resources that we have in Jamaica, right? If we do not change the culture of, of a lack of accountability, right? Then Jamaica will never move forward. And unfortunately, and quite sadly, I don't think she will move forward because I do not think Jamaicans are endowed with that sort of integrity to hold politicians and their leaders to account. I don't think we have that within us. We do not have that within us. We love the skullduggery. We love the anansicism. Anansicism, yeah, that's the word, right? We love it. We love to be tricked. We love to be fooled.
right? That is what is, is happening in Jamaica. And we have no concern. We're not concerned about the fact that the leaders or leaders are not really moving us on the path of progress. Progress for themselves, but certainly not progress for the citizens of Jamaica. We're not concerned. All we're concerned about is that or the leader that we decide we are going to choose or favorite leader that he gets back into office. That's the only thing we are concerned about. And on the side of the politicians, they are only concerned about getting back into office, being elected another for another term. They're not concerned about building the country. Right? So neither citizen nor leader, neither the citizens nor the leaders are concerned about nation building. So what nation can we forge? What nation are we living in? Is Jamaica even a country? Is it even a nation state? Or is it just a land, a wasteland of people just living there, with, you know, tribes, a wasteland of tribes? constantly at war against each other. Right? That's what it is. It's a wasteland. It is a wasteland. We have wasted 62 years of independence and we have done nothing, absolutely nothing, or very modest achievements that we have made. Very modest. And I would think without independence some of which we would have achieved anyway. Right? So we can't credit that to our being independent. We can't. Jamaicans, it's time now for us to think. It's time for us to think. And it requires serious reflection. Move away from the noise sometimes and just sit by the sea or somewhere and think. Because, you know, even thinking about the whole matter of being certified, his statutory declaration being certified, I really was not thinking about the fact that, okay, people are clamoring for it to be certified, but has it yet been published? Is the public aware of the transactions? made by Andrew Holness and, and Mark Holding? And the answer is no. The majority of citizens are, are not knowledgeable. All they are clamoring for is that the document or the documents of both the opposition leader and the prime minister be certified, and that is what makes them happy. Nothing else. Nothing else makes them happy. They just want to know if it's certified. And the fact that it is certified it means, therefore, that it is legal and everything in it is kosher. Right? And that is not true. That is not true. And that is the reason why I'm calling out the journalists in Jamaica, including the Dion Jackson Miller, that this is your job. Stop talking about nonsensical matter like Vibes Cartel and other things that are not here nor there. Right? Let Bad Scott will deal with his issues and his fans, let them deal with what they need to deal with. Yeah, present the news, you can tell what is happening, but all of the energies that we placed into this Bad Scott case was nonsense. And it reflects a nation that is in decay, that has already decayed. For you to have hours upon hours of reporting on Bad Scott. Right? That shows you the pulse of the nation that Jamaica is an electorate society is an illiterate society. It's backward and illiterate because nobody would be spending hours talking about Vance Carter. Right? When we have more pressing matters about which to talk, about which to discuss. Right? But we chose to talk about other things. Now it's time for us to find out what are the financial activities through the statutory declarations that these leaders 
are involved in. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will like and you'll share and you'll subscribe. Remember now that you have to like the videos. If the videos are to be shared on the algorithm, the algorithms are the one that will push the video along. If the video is not liked, it will not be shared. It will not be shared. So just don't watch the video. Hit the like button so that the video can be shared with as many people as possible. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next one.